How you doing? I'm good. Not too. Okay. It's windy here, so my legs are acting up. Okay. Okay. That, where you from? Good. Colorado. Colorado. What part? I used to live there. What part? Uh, I live in a small town in Greeley. Okay. Okay. I used to live in Colorado Springs. Oh, nice. I'm going there next weekend. Oh, okay. Okay. I love it out there. I love it. I was actually, st- I was stationed at the Air Force Base out there. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. It's nice. It's nice. Okay. Now I heard you say that it's windy out there. So your, your legs feel some type of way? Yeah. Um, okay. I, st- well, um, my spasms are really bad right now. It's okay. When it, when it gets super windy and it's mm-hmm. rainy weather, um, I, mm. my spasms are pretty bad. Uh, okay. my, from, I'd say like my, from my hips down to my toes, mm-hmm. um, I'm very tight. Mm. Okay. Okay. And that's something that I hear a lot. I don't really hear from everybody, but some people do bring it up as far as like the weather kind of like affecting how they feel and also like spasms and everything. So that's crazy that you would say that. As sister. Ask sister. Shut the door, please. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> You're okay. Go to ask sister. Open your chips. Sorry about that. Oh no, that's fine. That's fine. How many kids you got? I got, I got three. The youngest is three, and the oldest is ten. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Oh, the, you know what to be? I didn't realize you was that old. <laughs> I thought you was a lot. I thought you was, um, I give you about like 19, 20 before I just heard what I just heard. <laughs> now nah, I'm 27. Okay, okay, okay. All right, then I got a couple years on you. All right, so get into everything. What type of kid was you growing up? Uh, I would I I would like to say I was pretty mellow. I like to you know I was I like to be by myself, do my own thing. Okay. Um, but when I was with my friends you know, or people I was comfortable with, I was just mm-hmm. like this little ball of energy, goofball. <laughs> okay. Uh, always up to something. Mm-hmm. I would say that's kind of how I am now. You know, I'm kind of chill, mellow, but, you know, when I get around them friends that I, I enjoy being around, I just come alive, you know? So, okay. Okay. Now, life before your accident, what, what type of perception did you have of people in wheelchairs? Um, I didn't, I didn't really know much about people in wheelchairs other than, I had an aunt who was in a bad car accident, I want to say about a year prior to mine. Okay. And um, she had broken both of her legs and has a bunch of hardware, had a bunch of hardware in them. Mm. Um, So I think that was about as close to, I came to maybe like knowing somebody or being aware of, you know, wheelchair Mm -hmm. life. Okay, so... So she wasn't paralyzed. She just, she just pretty much had like a whole bunch of hardware in her legs. So she had to use a wheelchair for a little while. Yeah, um, okay. I'm not really sure. Like all the injuries that she had obtained with her accident, mm-hmm. but I know she had um, broken both her arms and broken both her legs. Because mm. um, after my accident, I reached out to her. Okay. Um, more so just to vent because I felt like that was the only buddy person mm-hmm. I knew who understood how I felt sitting in a wheelchair. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. In some ways I can kind of relate because I had an uncle who was paralyzed, but at at the time, whenever he reached out to me, I was just going through so much that I just didn't want to talk to anybody. And then a few months after that, he ended up passing away. So I never really got to talk to him and really got to kick game with him and really find out, you know, like just little things that I probably needed to know. And I would say that that's one of the biggest mistakes that I made because I didn't surround myself with people that was going through what I was going through. And I say it all the time, and I try to tell people all the time, you got to get around people who 
can kind of relate to what you're going through. You got to talk to people. You got to network so you can get some type of game from them because they're going to be able to tell you just a little bit more than somebody who's not in a wheelchair who who went to school for this. You know, they're going to be able to tell you like the little ins and outs that they don't know, that they can't tell you. So, okay. Okay, now, what type of injury are you? Like, what level injury are you? Um, I'm an incomplete uh, T5, mm-hmm. T6. Okay. Okay. So for the people out there, is that higher or is that lower? Um, I would say, um, I would say, well, like for where I could feel, I want to say it's like below my ribs where my rib cage okay. is. Okay. Okay. Cause I'm a T10 complete. And mine's pretty much stops like where my belly button is. So that's so I can't feel nothing past my belly button. Down. So for me, where my rib cage ends until okay. like until my belly button, I would say uh-huh. that's where my s- sensation gets a little bit wonky. Like yeah. I'm a, I'm aware that it's there, but mm-hmm. like touch and everything, it just yeah. it's weird. It's I describe exactly. it as like having a giant rubber band mm-hmm. in that area. Okay. 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 Now, is it like a, would you say it's kind of like a straight line, like going across, or is it kind of like a, like a zigzag line, like going around your body? Cause that's kind of like how mine's is. Uh, I would say it's like a sh- straight line. Okay. Getting into the day, everything happened. How was your day going? Um, it was, it was Friday. It was April 6th, mm-hmm. 2019. Um, okay. Okay, so not that long ago. Now, I'm only, I hit my three year mark a couple weeks ago. Mm, Okay. Okay. So, like, on that day, it was a Friday. I had just gotten off of work. Mm -hmm. I picked up my kiddos from the babysitter and went to take them to my grandparents because me and my husband, who was my boyfriend at the time, we're gonna go out because I had um, I was getting promoted at my job. I was working mm-hmm. at a dog treat factory. I was an okay. assistant lead, so mm-hmm. I, we were getting in the process of moving to a bigger building. And mm-hmm. they had told me that day when we moved, they wanted to make me um, give me the lead position. Mm-hmm. So. I had just got a promotion. We were gonna go out to Blackhawk. Um, well, we did, and we went up there. And by the time we left, I want to say it was like eleven thirty midnight. Mm-hmm. And so, from where we live, that's like a couple hours away. Um, so my I I want to I don't remember who drove down the mountain. I want to say my husband drove us down the mountain, and then we switched, and I drove the rest of the way home. Uh, the last time I looked at the clock, it was one thirty-eight in the morning, okay. and uh, we had thirty minutes away from getting to getting to our home. Mm-hmm. And in my head, I, all I could like I was like figuring out what I was going to do the next day after I had picked up my girls from my grandparents, um, and like in between, like making myself like a schedule or whatever I was like I'm tired I'm tired like I kept thinking like I'm tired and we drove past this McDonald's and my thought was like go pull into the parking lot and go take a nap but then I was just like no we only got 30 minutes left I can make it we're gonna be fine it's only 30 minutes Mm -hmm. and as I keep driving and it's dark nobody's on the highway other than the semi that was trailing behind us um, so it was like pretty late and I get, I guess at that point, like I was starting to nod off and the car went to, I had a Corolla. So I guess from where I nodded off, the car pulled to the left and it hit the median and it bounced off. And as that happened, like it happened so quick, um, when it hit the median, I woke up and I seen lights and I don't know if they were 
our car lights or if they were the semi lights because our car turned Mm -hmm. and then i was just like i was like oh fuck and i went to correct the car but i overcorrected and from then i had blacked out but when i read the police report our car had cartwheeled three times and then Mm -hmm. it landed on the roof and it slid into this ditch so when i came to again and i woke up i was laying on the roof of the car okay okay so at the point that the car goes into the ditch is the car upside down or is the car like straight up no the car is the car after it cartwheeled three times it landed on the roof and then it just slid all the way into the ditch Mm. because when me when when me and my husband have like talked about it Mm -hmm. um he when he describes like his point of view what happened he mentions like he could feel the gravel the rocks or whatever um grinding against the roof of the car Mm. okay okay so when you say you landed on the roof did you land on top of the car yeah i didn't have my seatbelt on um they said if i was to if i had would have had my seatbelt on um Mm -hmm. It would have killed me because I had a a hangman break in my neck between C2 and C3. Yeah. Um, so they said if I would have had my seatbelt on, it would have instantly killed me. Um, so when I woke up, I was laying on my stomach on the roof of the car. And like the the light on the roof was like right where my left hand was. Mm. Okay. Okay. So when you say that you had a hangman break... Uh, for the people out there, what does that mean? Um, so, like I said, between uh, C2 and C3 is where my neck broke, and it broke diagonally. Okay. They told me um, that I was supposed to be a quad. Ooh. Well, on well, really, I should have been dead because of the break in mm-hmm. my neck. Yeah. Um, and then they told me I should have been a quad with that injury alone. But mm-hmm. I'm paraplegic. Okay. Who? Okay. So, so what? So, so what types of injuries did your husband sustain during the uh, uh, during the accident? Um, I think he just. I think he had like a few broken ribs. Because mm-hmm. well, um, he walked away like yeah. just. Okay. He walked away and. I I think that's what he said. He just had like a few broken ribs. I took more of the of the damage. I broke my back from T4 to T8. I broke mm. my neck from between C2 and C3. My lung collapsed. Um a couple my ribs are broken in a few places. Mm. Damn. Damn so you- Damn, so you whew, damn, so you really took most of the damage then. That's yeah. That's tough. Yeah. Okay. And I'm only I'm okay, so, I'm a petite woman, so I'm like only five foot and maybe like a hundred pounds. Yeah. Okay, so when you said that you came to, was you in any pain? When or could you feel anything? Um it was I didn't I didn't really like realize the pain. Like I had this burning sensation in my shoulder. Like I thought my, Mm -hmm. I broke my shoulder really because it just, it was burning. It was on fire. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't even realize like what was wrong with my neck. Cause when I woke up, I was looking at the passenger side and I realized, I realized uh, my husband was gone. He wasn't in there. So my thought, my first thoughts were like, you know, where is he? Mm-hmm. And as I'm moving my head to look out my window, like I could feel, I was like a bobblehead. My head was just shaking. And I'm surprised like I didn't cause myself more damage, you know, trying to move my head looking from left to right. Yeah. So as I'm looking to the right side, I see this man in um, some brown pants, work boots, and a 
like a traffic vest or with reflectors mm-hmm. on and he's like are you okay and I, t- I my first thought I told him I was like my shoulder my shoulder hurts it burns I was like and I'm scared and he's like they're on their way they're almost here just don't move they're almost here and they'll, yeah. they'll help you and I told him again I was like I'm scared and then that's when I went I knocked back out again Whew, okay. Okay, so when you knock back out, when do you come back to? Um after my after my surgery, they had mm-hmm. sedated me. I was sedated for a couple of days, but I was pretty I was pretty conscious of like who was in and out of the room and you know, everybody mm-hmm. was talking who was talking to me. Yeah. I was I was pretty pretty there. Cause, um, I remember my father had walked in the room, he was on my left side and my younger brother was on my right side. And my father goes, uh, I love you stupid kid. And I was like, don't call me stupid. And then my brother started talking to me and it was like, I switched. He's like, I love you sister. You're going to be okay. And I'm like, I love you too, brother. So I was like, I was pretty aware. Like I was in the hospital. Yeah. Okay, so when you finally come back to all the way, what can you feel and what can't you feel? Um, for the first two weeks that I was like in the hospital before they moved me mm-hmm. to my rehab, um, yeah. I was more focused on the pain that I had in mm. my back. Okay. So like, nobody told me like you're paralyzed, like you can't walk, yeah. you can't move your legs. I I was just so focused on the just the pain that I was feeling in my back. And it didn't really it was weird cuz it's like you don't feel anything like it's you know it's like nothing's there. So it wasn't mm-hmm. I didn't focus on it too much until I had moved yeah. to um my rehab. Okay. Yeah, that's that's kind of what it seems like it is for most people that they don't really tell you that you're I would say paralyzed because they didn't tell me. And, and like for the most people I talked to, they didn't tell them either. So it's kind of like really on you to kind of put two and two together. So like for me, I kind of, I pretty much realized I was paralyzed whenever they kept coming in, changing out like the catheter and stuff like that. And I'm just like, in my head, I'm just thinking to myself like, why can't I feel it? And then I kind of like put two and two together. Like I can't move my legs. like, And it, it was just really on me to kind of just put two and two together. So it kind of seems like that's what it is for the most people. And looking back on it, I don't really like it, but I understand it kind of because you're going through so much that they don't want to really add that on top of it because you never know how you're going to react, you know, hearing something like that. So I guess it's kind of like, I would say like on your family and then also on you to kind of put two and two together. So. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Cause mm-hmm. it like it didn't even dawn on me. I had a nurse, and she's like, "Do you want me to shave your legs for you?" And I was like, mm-hmm. "Yeah, you, if you want to, go for it." Yeah. And it's like it didn't even dawn on me that I couldn't feel the razor or her mm-hmm. even like touching and moving my legs. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So when you wake up, what types of machines are you hooked up to? Do you know? Oh, I had uh, two breathing tubes. Um, I have a, yeah, I still have a big, a pretty big scar from one of them. I, Mm -hmm. it was like a curly one, like a pig's tail. And then I had a little one. And then I had a, a central IV. Mm -hmm. They kept pumping me with fluids um, and with sodium Cause I had like a big craving, like I wanted like cucumbers with lemon and salt. Mm -hmm. And that was like, I think the first thing that I really actually ate. Okay. And they're like, you're, you're craving salt cause your body doesn't have enough sodium. So it was like getting pumped up with that and then a bunch of potassium. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, yeah, that, that was it as I, cause I had to wait a while to get, uh, my braces in. 
Okay, so when you say braces, what type of braces did you receive? You talking about I got for your a mouth pediatric. Or? Oh no, no, for I had a brace that connected. Um, I had the neck brace and then the back brace, oh, but oh. they connected as one. Um, they told me they had to order a pediatric one because I'm so tiny. Yeah. Okay. So I had one like that. Okay. Okay, go throw it away. Okay, so, whew, damn, that's a lot. That's a lot. Um, okay, so going through all that, how are you feeling mentally? Close the door. Cierra la puerta. You're fine. Shut the door. Go watch your tablet. Yeah. Okay. Yes, now go watch your tablet, please. Shut the door. Thank you. Uh, mentally, I was like, I want to say mentally, I was, I was okay. Like I had accepted the fact that this, this was my reality. You know, this yeah. was like the consequences of my actions. Mm -hmm. Um, it was more like, what's like waiting for what's next? Like, okay. where, where do I go from here? Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 So you said it was about two weeks from you waking up to you actually going to like the rehab and therapy and stuff? Yeah, it was about two weeks. And then they drove me to Craig Hospital where it was like rehab was a nine to five job. I was up at, like, yeah. I, I'd be up like five o'clock in the morning because that's when they would come in and check my vitals. Mm -hmm. And then it was like a few hours later, around seven, someone was coming in, helping me get changed and yeah. get up and get dressed. By nine o'clock, I was already heading to the gym for wheelchair class. And I wouldn't be done with my day until about like 430, five o'clock, depending mm. on what the schedule said. Okay. Oh, yes. Uh, I hated therapy. At first I did. At first, but I kind of grew to actually enjoy it and understand it. So, okay. Okay, now going through the going through therapy, like uh, like physical therapy and OT. What would you kind of say was the most beneficial thing that you learned? Um. I, I would say it was really like the encouragement that I had from my PT and my OT. Okay. Because um, it was just, they would always tell me, you you can be as independent as you want to be. You don't need mm -hmm. a caregiver. You don't need anybody to take care of you. You yeah. can be as independent as you were before. Just you're going to do it in a wheelchair. So yeah. you're going to find different ways to do it. You won't be able to do it mm -hmm. like you were before. And I guess my ambition too, and it's like, mm. I took it as a challenge, you know, yeah. it was like, nobody's going to tell me I can't do nothing and I'm going to show you I can do it. Mm -hmm. So it's like when my OT, he's like, what's your goal want to be for the week? And I'm like, uh, getting dressed, getting dressed in and out of my chair. And it was like, okay. I completed that goal in like 20 minutes and he looked at me and he's like, I, I really don't know what to do with you at this point. You just made a week goal. You accomplished your week goal in like 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. He's like, I'm not sure what we do now. <laughs> okay. Okay. So do you feel like things came easy to you? Yeah. Yeah. I felt like the only thing that was like, the only thing that was holding me back was my, was my brace. Because a okay. lot of things that they wanted to teach me, they couldn't because um, of my oh. brace and having to heal all the way. Because yeah. mm. I, I got my back brace off in rehab, but I I left there wearing my neck, 
brace for a couple more weeks. Okay. Okay, so the whole process with PT and OT, how long did that last? Um, I was at Craig for about like a good two and a half months. Okay. Okay, I would say that that's kind of like around like the average for most people. I think mine was around like two months. So like from the time like I started like PT and OT, it was about two months. Yeah, I was on like a, I think it was like a sixty day program. Okay. And okay. yeah, they don't really like they don't really let you rest. There's yeah. like you go to wheelchair class, <laughs> yeah, you learn how to pop wheelies. <laughs> Go to mm. downstairs, jump curbs, open doors, all sorts of doors. Mm-hmm. You're going to you see, work for, out in the gym. The you see, for me, F-E-S mine wasn't bike. that intense. Mine wasn't that intense. I, I, like, I did stuff like transfers and like going outside and stuff like that, but it wasn't as intense as far as like doing willies and I would say like hopping like curbs and stuff like that. Mine was more, I don't I Miles was more minimal. It wasn't really like, like I learned like the basic stuff, like how to calf, like you know, like uh, like bowel care. Uh, let me see, like you know, like how to shower, just just like minimal stuff. Like I didn't learn all that stuff until I got out, and then I started doing like a little research, or I went to go push off real fast, and I actually did a willy, and then I was like, oh shit, I can kind of do that. So so then I kept trying to do it, and then I mastered it in like I don't know, I don't know like ten minutes or something like that. So it wasn't too. Yeah, bad. it was. It was pretty. I'd say yeah, it was pretty intense because my I was in in the gym, mm-hmm. um, doing the the ski workouts. Okay. Um, in wheelchair class, they would take off your tipper bars and put on like the belt and have someone hold you behind to mm. figure out how to do wheelies, and then it's like. Okay. Once you did that, you'd get like these a certain type of tipper bars to mm-hmm. to practice them. They would have you do them three sixty, <laughs> going around the gym in yeah. a wheelie. They were teaching you like if you were to fall, how to catch yourself in your wheelchair, and then how to pick yourself back up. Mm-hmm. Um, there was okay. We'd have like a sh- a stretching class that teach you how to like stretch your legs either by yourself or you know teach somebody to help you stretch mm-hmm. your legs. Okay. How to pick yourself up? Like over there at Craig, they like they have this little room where they it has like a a car in it, so yeah. to teach you how to transfer in and out of the car, how mm. to transfer in like in in an airport in an airplane. They have like little mm, okay. rows how to do that. Damn, um, they this, like, this sound intense. It won't none of that oh, yeah, where they, I was at. They have a bed, like they put you on the bed and they teach you how to like, you know, roll on your stomach, mm-hmm. pick yourself up, transfer okay. on the toilet and the bathtub by yourself. Okay. okay. They, right. It's pretty, right. it's Damn, nice because they give you like different scenarios. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, shout out to Craig, because I know mine wasn't that intense. They ain't, they didn't have half the stuff that you're talking about as far as, like, the the plane thing. Like, I, look, look, they ain't had none of that. Okay. All right, so during this whole time, where's your husband at? Is he there helping you? Um, he, he, he would come after work or... Um, oh, okay. Or, you know, if he was with the kids, stopping yeah. to see the kids. Mm-hmm. I, we had, we had agreed. He's like, I don't want to be here and distract you. I want you to get as much to focus okay. on you and learn as much as you can. I don't want to be mm-hmm. here as a distraction to you. Cause that's what I feel like. He's like, that's what I feel like I'm doing. So I was just okay. like, to, and to me, I was just like, that's fine because it's like, I understand, you know, I wasn't in that accident alone. So it's just like, I need you to be okay. I need you to worry about you because I'm fine. I'm in a safe place. Doctors, nurses around the clock. So. Okay. Okay. Now, how do you feel like he took everything in? Uh, Like me being in a chair or just like overall? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh. 
I would say like the I would say like everything overall because yes, you are the one that's paralyzed, but at the same time your significant other, they're going through something as well as far as with you being paralyzed now. So I guess like how how did he take everything or like how did he kind of like accept everything? Um I don't think like from my point of view he, he didn't really like treat me any different. It was mm-hmm. It was like, you know, she's in the chair yeah. now. She sits all day. Mm-hmm. But she's here. She's she's still the mm-hmm. same. Like Yeah. Nothing about her has changed other than the fact that, that she can't walk. Mm-hmm. So I never really felt like indifferent from him okay. or had like that thought like Oh, he's mm. gonna leave. It was just like this is, this is what we're doing. And like later down yeah. the road, you know, we had, we had a heart to heart. And I'm like, I told him, I know this isn't what we planned, and mm. I know this life is not easy. So, if you want out, let me know. Mm. Because at the end of the day, I need you to be okay. I yeah. need you to be happy in all forms i need you to be okay in all forms Mm. that's all i'm worried about okay so it's like if you don't if this isn't the life you want that's fine just let me know just be honest Mm. okay okay now i i know you said that he wasn't there like during the whole thing but did they allow him to come in and then them teach him some things with like pretty much like how to help you out Oh, yeah. Um, Him and my mother were, like, the two that were mostly there. So Mm -hmm. they know, like, basic stuff, what to do, you know, when I have, um, if I have, like, an AD episode, they know, Mm -hmm. like, to tip my chair backs. Okay. Um, He knows, like, if he absolutely had to cath me, he knows Mm how. Okay. Um, and he knows like how to do a bowel program too. If he had mm-hmm. like you know, if he had to, yeah. if I had gotten too sick not to be able to, um, mm-hmm. he knows how to. He knows Is how. Tell sister, shut the tell sister. Um, he knows how. He knows how to like take my wheelchair apart and put it back together. Okay. He used. In the beginning, he used to uh, clean out my casters, adjust mm-hmm. my brakes. Now okay. I do it on my own, but mm-hmm. yeah, he, he knows like the basics. Yeah, I actually seen you taking apart. I seen you taking apart your casters on uh, on on uh, IG the other day, and the only problem that I have with those is that the screws always strip for me. Do you have that problem? Uh, no, I haven't had that problem. I still got like okay. all the original pieces from mm-hmm. my chair, and but I, my like I said, my husband used to do it for me. So when I had yeah. him teach me how to do it, mm-hmm. he's like, "If you can't get it off by yourself, or you can't yeah. tighten it the way it should be, let me know so you don't strip it." Yeah, that's ex. I guess the screws that they come with, like uh, like the ones that I like the one that I have, um, mine's is custom to me. Is yours custom to you? My chair, yeah. Yeah. Well, like mine's, like they use. I feel like they use like the cheapest screws because it strips hella easy. Like it like kind of melts whenever you go to like screw it on and like screw it off. Like the damn screw pretty much melts, so like sometimes I gotta get like new screws or like I gotta have the people come out and they'll just like I don't know like try to get it off, but like for the most part, like on my old wheelchair, I never had that problem because the screws were like okay, but in this new one that I just got, it, like like the screws are horrible. I can't I can't take nothing off. Like like my brake, like on these ones, uh, uh, like what type of brakes do you have on your chair? I just got the basic plastic ones still. Okay, is it um? Do you do you have to put do you have to put like a brake on each wheel or do you got just one brake where like you just push it down? Uh, you probably got no, like scissor got, brakes. Uh, mine are the ones where you uh you push it down and then you pull it back up to unlock them. Okay, okay, I like those. 
I actually prefer those over the scissors because the scissor breaks, uh, the scissor breaks are more expensive, but the scissor breaks, they break all the time. So like the ones that you have, I actually prefer those because those are a lot easier to like maintain as far as like, um, as far as like, uh, like you don't have to really adjust them as much. So I actually prefer those ones, but on this one right here, I got, I got, they're called disc brakes. And you just push one down and it locks both wheels. I don't like it because if you if you do like a push up or something like that, it kind of still like rocks back and forth. So it doesn't like necessarily like lock them like all the way, but it's all good though. Trust me, as you get further yeah. and further as you get further and further, you'll have different chairs and like you'll just notice like little things that you like and you don't like. Yeah, when I was in the hospital, like testing mm -hmm. out different chairs, I liked the I, I'm a, I think they were aluminum brakes where okay. the part that touches the tire it was like really mm -hmm. flat and it was still that push and pull to unlock them. I thought mm -hmm. those like were really good brakes to like hold your wheels in place because like yeah. sometimes when I lock mine, my wheel still mm -hmm. moves depending how aggressive I am. Yeah, and I like those ones because it's just like it keeps them in place. Mm -hmm. Me too that's why I actually really like the ones that you have on. But if you talk to people who like actually like build the wheelchairs and stuff like that, they don't necessarily recommend those brakes, I guess. Cause a lot of people don't like it, but, but for me, like me personally, I feel like that those brakes kind of work the best. Like they, they work way better than the scissor brakes and then the scissor brakes, no lie. They're like, like, ugh, like $80 a piece almost sometimes. So it, they really kind of depend, but those ones that you have, because I used to buy those ones over the scissor brakes. I think those ones were around like 30 to 40 bucks a piece, if I'm not mistaken. So it's not too bad. It's not too bad. I hate these damn. It's a love hate relationship I got with these disc brakes. All right. It's a love hate relationship. Uh, uh, sometimes I go back to my old wheelchair. Sometimes I don't, but it just takes a little while. But okay. Okay. So whew, getting out the hospital. Do you feel like that you was ready to get back into the swing of things? Do you feel like you learned like enough to pretty much like leave and be self sufficient? Uh, no, no, you are watching your tablets. You are fine. Sorry about that. Um, oh no, it's fine. It's fine. Um. I want to say I was because in the hospital, I was, I had, you know, not really knowing how bad my injury was or, you know, not yeah. really knowing much about spinal cord injuries and paralysis. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, my plan was like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to get out and I'm going to go back to work and I'm, you know, I'm, it was going to be normal for Ooh. me. That's like what my plan was in my head. Okay. And what I guess what stumped me was like everybody else, they're like, you're going to need help. And I'm like, well, like, what you talking about? Lewis? What do you mean I'm going to need help? And my husband, too, he's like, you can't go back to work right away. You got to you got you to gotta heal. Mm -hmm. And I'm and it was confusing to me because I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, I'm yeah, I'm going to be fine. I, mm -hmm. I got to get back into the swing of things. So. Initially, yeah. when I did leave at the hospital, that's not what happened. I, I've i been a stay-at-home mom since my accident. But I want to say, okay. like, eight months, eight months in, it was more mm -hmm. me kind of, like, um, unbagging everything emotionally and mentally that I didn't do in yeah. the hospital. Okay. Okay. And what was one of the things that you had to kind of learn on yourself that the hospital didn't teach you? Had to take care of my family. Oh, okay. Damn. I was, I wasn't expecting that answer. Damn, That's crazy. Um, okay. So you said that you've been a stay at home mom since you, since you left out, since you left the hospital, have you looked for work at all? Yeah, I've been trying to like find um, you know, remote jobs. Yeah. Cuz 
I, I don't have a, an adaptive vehicle to get me from point A to point B. So it's okay. like I've been trying to find like remote jobs. Mm, but in okay. the same sense, it was just like, do I really want to do or do I mm. want to go and pursue pursue dreams and pursue a passion? Mm. Okay. Okay. So what you passionate about? What you want to, I guess what you want to do? Um, I, I guess kind of what I already do, like what I do on Instagram, you know, showing people like you are not, you're not alone. You can find somebody Mm -hmm. somehow to be able to relate to. Um, and not only that, you know, it's like, you can't, as much as you think you can't do this, you can, you can do this. It, It may be hard now. Like I used to hate it all the time. There is this older gentleman in my wheelchair class and he'd tell me all the time. He's like, He'd always tell me, it gets easier. As time goes by, it gets easier. And I'd be like, I'd roll my eyes and be like, yeah, 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 whatever, like, leave me alone. But Mm. he was, you know, he was right. It does get easier once you find your way. Exactly. Exactly. You'll you'll find out how to kind of go about things, like, as you go along. And then also you'll find easier ways to do things. Also, when you start networking, talking to people, you know, like, getting game from people, then they'll probably teach you some ways that you probably didn't know. And like, those, those are probably be like a little bit more beneficial. Maybe as far as like, Oh, like they might use like a certain type of catheter that you don't use, you know, just like little stuff like that. Okay. Okay. So you said that you didn't have an adaptive vehicle. Do you have the portable hand controls or nothing? Uh, no, nothing right now. Um, like, okay. That's, I'm working on, like, my goals now, like, for this year is to be able to lift my wheelchair because it's, like, 30 pounds. Mm, So I want to be able to lift it, get it in and out of the car by myself because right now I'm working on, like, everybody in my family and we also have, like, an SUV. Yeah. So it's, like, that's a big jump from my chair to the Mm -hmm. passenger seat. So I'm really working on getting in and out by myself. Okay. Okay. Have you have you drove since your incident? No. Um, no, everybody chauffeurs me around. If it's not my mm-hmm. husband, it's my mom or my grandma. Mm-hmm. Do you want to drive? But I'm at that point. Yeah, I'm at that point where I feel like, yeah. right, I want more independence and freedom. And I told my husband, okay. he's like, what do you want? What do you need? And it's like, I want things that you necessarily can't give me. I got to give them to yeah. myself. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And I could definitely relate because it was a point in my life where I was getting chauffeured around too. And me actually getting back into the swing of things as far as like driving and everything, it was, I, I guess it was one of the, biggest things that I feel like that really helped with like my self-esteem and everything like really just getting back into the swing things and really just becoming me again because now I'm able to drive myself places I can go get in the car and uh just just go somewhere without me having to ask somebody for help or like me having to be on somebody else's time as far as like hey can you take me here or can you take me there I could just get in the car and go so I could definitely relate and I know a lot of people out there can really relate to you because a lot of us have really been in that situation where where we really had to wait on somebody or we really just had that itch to just want to do more but physically you kind of can't because you're still in the process of just learning stuff you know so i trust me i understand that and i also know that the viewers out there that, that they can understand as well because who trust me look i just understand so um i would say as far as like driving and stuff like that you don't necessarily have to have like something built into the car. You can always just get portable hand controls. Portable hand controls ain't that much. They were like, Phew. I'm actually about to drop some. <laughs> I just had to throw that up in there. But uh, you can get them for around like 150 to like 300 bucks. I know the first pair I brought, I bought from eBay. It was like 330 bucks. And you, I mean, I still got them to this day. Uh, I got other ones, but I mean, I've used those ones all the time. You know, so 
portable hand control is definitely the way to go when you want to get back into the swinging things. Uh, are you good with your hands? Like, are your hands like fully functional and everything? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, everything like from I would say like my lower ribs up is pretty. Yeah. It's pretty okay. normal. I mean, if I hit my funny bone, uh, mm-hmm. or my yeah, on either arm, I'll lose complete yeah. feeling in them for mm-hmm. a while like i'm still able to move them but i lose like complete sensation for a mm. couple like five minutes okay okay all right now uh you, you said that you got some dreams and goals because i want to kind of touch on that just a little bit i ain't gonna keep you too much longer though all right now i kind of see what you're doing on instagram i like it i like it because i try to tell people all the time that you said it that you just hit your three year mark, correct? Yeah. At that three year mark, I was literally just coming out of that like a deep depression. All right. So I wasn't like I mean, I was leaving the house, but I really just didn't want to do anything. I was I was like in the room all the time. I like I like I was waking up at six o'clock. So it's really is it's really amazing to see you already posting up on Instagram, but I will also say that the times are a little bit different. All right. Because it wasn't, it wasn't as much knowledge out there as far as like on social media, because I got paralyzed in 2012. So it wasn't really like how it is now where it's just like, you got people posting up on Instagram and like doing stuff like on YouTube, you know? So it wasn't really like that. So I would say it's, it's a lot more, it's a, I would say that social media is a lot more beneficial now, but I really like what you're doing on social media as far as like for the disability community as well, because like you said on the post right now, Hey, we are people too. All right. And I know sometimes we kind of get overlooked as far as like, uh, like people overlook us, like as far as like when it comes to like certain things. So it's really amazing to kind of see that you're doing that right now. It's only three years after your incident. So I definitely commend you on that. I get a lot of like experienced wheelchair users and they're like, how long have you been mm-hmm. in a wheelchair for? And it's like, I'm still a newbie at this. Like I'm still trying <laughs> yeah. to figure shit out. Yeah, exactly. And exactly. Social, you know, yeah, we all are. Social media. Like I barely had my Instagram, mm-hmm. um, like a year and a half. Okay. So it's like the people I've connected with and I've made mm. friends with and learned things from like that have like really helped me like yeah. come out of my shell because that's, I went through that like depression stage where I didn't want to do nothing. I didn't, I didn't mm. want to talk to nobody. I wanted everybody just to like leave me alone, yeah. angry at the world. Like mm-hmm. I went through that, but it was like when I made my Instagram and started connecting with people and like, mm-hmm having conversations that were relatable because it's like, you know, an able-bodied person can't fathom what it's like to be sitting in a wheelchair. Exactly. So it's like, once I got those connections, it was just like, okay, I'm a little bit more comfortable. I'm going to start figuring out who I am, who's Lizzie now. Mm -hmm. Okay. And look, and like that person said, you can do everything that you did before. You're just going to have to do it a little bit differently. All right. Trust me. Like driving is a lot more funner. Like, you know, you do it with a, you can either do it with like a little stick or you could do it with like a little device. I mean, to me, it's more fun. It's like a video game to me. So, I mean, you know, like you could do everything. So that's it. And like I also say, you just got network. That's it. And it, it's, it, it seems to me that you're doing that. So, I say that you pretty much got, you pretty much, you pretty much doing everything that I would, I would pretty much recommend. All right. And look, as time go on, you're going to get more curious about things. And trust me, <laughs> you're going to learn how to get that wheelchair in the car easily. It like, like it, it might just be a little bit heavy, probably because you're a little bit smaller. That's kind of what I'm guessing because most wheelchairs are kind of light, but it might just be like a little bit heavier because you just a little lighter. I don't know. Maybe. Do you have to break down your whole wheelchair? Like, like, uh, like does like the little like leg pieces come off or is it just one piece? You just got to take off the wheels and the cushion. Um, no, 
now I could take off the tipper bars, uh, oh, my big okay. wheels, and then my okay. backrest is high. Mm -hmm. um, so that folds down. Okay. Yeah. Mine's is hot too. I be seeing people with a low uh, backrest, and I feel like that I need a low backrest because, I mean, I can, like, I mean, I got core control. So I feel like that I need a smaller backrest, but mine's is kind of hot too, like like my backrest. And I feel like that it looks more like a wheelchair whenever it's a bigger backrest. I don't know. That's just kind of like my opinion. You feel like that too or no? Yeah, because uh, mm -hmm. my backrest, it hugs me in my ribs. And I yeah, don't like my, it because I don't like it because where my ribs are broken or where like pieces mm -hmm. are missing um, yeah. on a bad day, like my I'm pretty sore. And mm. when I hit my like second year mark, I'm like my next wheelchair. I'm like I want a lower. I feel like yeah. I, I can sit with the lower backrest. Mm -hmm. Me too. Just Me too. Okay. Okay. So I just got a few more questions for you. Um, whenever that that year mark comes around, April six, how do you feel about that day? Um. I it sometimes it, like this past year it was more like a reflection when I mm -hmm. made um my video because I felt like I like I had been feeling like I was stuck like yeah I I grew so rapidly in my growth and like in my abilities I I was trying to figure out like what's next mm -hmm. like I just felt like I was stuck. But once yeah. I made that video and it was just like, no, like I, you've come a long way. You've come from mm. like not being able to transfer by yourself to taking care of four able body people that you live with. Mm. And I, I think it's funny because it's like the disabled persons take <laughs> care of like able body people. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, in the be like the first year, it didn't hit me until after the day had passed, mm -hmm. and I had gotten like pretty emotional, like this, like yeah. this is my life. Yeah. But um, these past two years, it was more like a reflection period, and mm -hmm. reminding myself how far I've come and how far I still get to go. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, last question. If you can change anything about that night, what would it be? Um, I don't think I would change anything. I would just let it play out the way it did because this, the self-growth that I gained from these past three years okay. is something I, I was trying to get there mm. um, when, before my accident. I was working towards that, but it was like, I feel like this accident gave me, um, mm -hmm. it gave me more what I was seeking out for. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't really change anything because my mentality, my change, the way I look at life changed. And mm -hmm. um, it's like you, you, so I feel like you get that when you go through something traumatic or you you know your life changes yeah. in an instant. Mhm. Mm okay. Uh, and whew, That's tough. That's tough that you would kind of say it like that because I feel like that I feel like that for me it's the same exact way. It's really a love-hate relationship. Cause I know, I know I wouldn't be where I'm at right now if it wasn't for my wheelchair. I know I wouldn't have met some of the people that I've met if it wasn't for my wheelchair. And is it's hard. It's so hard for me to say it, but I feel like that I wouldn't change anything as well. Because I know, I know for a fact mentally I wouldn't be the person I am right now. Like I, I know that I wouldn't, I wouldn't have changed my outlook on certain things. If I wasn't in a wheelchair and I know that the way I looked at a lot of things before was, was really immature, you know, and I know I wouldn't have got there if it wasn't for me going through just such a, 
such a life changing event, you know? So trust me, I can relate. And I know a lot of people can relate. And for me, it's really a love hate relationship. It's like, you know, it's, it sucks. But like that person told you, as time goes on, things are going to get a lot easier for you, a lot smoother for you. And it's going to be like second nature. So you ain't even going to notice it. So long as you skip, as long as you stick to the schedule, which I'm pretty sure, you know, I'm pretty sure, you know, because you got kids. So I'm pretty sure you was on a schedule before. So this was just something that you just kind of had to add into the schedule. You know what I mean? So, look, it's just going to get easy and easier over time. So. Yeah, absolutely. Because mm-hmm. it's like if I if I would have changed anything about that night, or if you know I did pull over and take a nap yeah. and get some rest, it's like I wouldn't I wouldn't be doing the podcast or and mm. meeting people and having like these wonderful conversations with you. Yeah. So it's just like I I I would keep it the same. Yeah. You know, yeah. my family might feel different about it, or mm. but it's just like. Yeah, it's like this. What I gained from it, that's mm-hmm. like priceless to me. Exactly, exactly. Because me, I was living in Colorado at the time, and then I ended up having to move back to Georgia with my parents for like two years, and then from there, I ended up moving to Cali. And I know that I know that if I wasn't in a wheelchair, I would have never moved to California. So, and like I love, like I like I love it out here. I mean, I ain't gonna lie, I love Colorado too, but. I mean, to me, I feel like I feel like that since I lived there for a little while, for like two years, I feel like it'd be hard for somebody in a wheelchair. I don't. You know what? I, look, I definitely want to ask you that. How was that with the snow and everything? Like, please let me know. It it is a pain battling oh, the okay. elements. Like yeah, um, like now in spring, it's mm-hmm. pretty windy and rainy, and yeah. When the when you're trying to push against the wind, <laughs> there, it's just like it's so yeah. hard. Like I was trying to get to yeah. our door, and mm-hmm. um, everybody was ahead of me, and I'm just like trying to push through and push through through the wind, and mm-hmm. me and my husband just couldn't not like help but giggle because it's just like i'm fighting the wind yeah. and the wind is winning but i'm still like trying to go for it yeah yeah and the winter and like is, most people is, yeah m- most people won't understand it unless you've been to colorado it's so windy like it gets so windy to the point where you gotta drive a little slower because you feel like the the wind is gonna pick up your car like that's how windy it really is out there so trust me i definitely understand I def- Colorado is, you know, like you could be in shorts in the morning and then it's a big blizzard, you know, by like four o'clock in the afternoon, you know, so the elements is actually crazy out there. It feels like you can go through all four seasons in one day. So. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> like, so it's, yeah. um, it's supposed to snow and red feather tomorrow. It's windy oh. right now. Um, mm. The winters are no fun just because. Yeah. Like I said, the weather does affect my body. So it's like when that cold front comes in, um, my nerve pain mm-hmm. is a lot more intense than, okay. you know, I guess somebody who does live in California or Arizona mm-hmm. in the warmer states, like okay. it is constant 24 mm-hmm. seven. Do you have any plans on leaving? I don't know. I don't know. Just because, like, this is this is home. Colorado is beautiful. Um, I, I was like, just about to say a couple, that. A couple years, a couple years before my accident, I went to California um, mm-hmm. a couple times, and like every time I I was flying back over, it was just like I had such an appreciation for the state and its beauty flying over the yeah. Rocky mountains. Like it's, it's beautiful. So mm-hmm. it's just like, mm, okay. probably not. And then like, I've heard too, like, you know, Colorado has some pretty tough people just because our air quality is sucky and it's super thin. So, mm-hmm. well, it's not that the air quality is sucky. It's just, it is thin because you're just in higher elevation. Now where I live at, the air quality is shitty. You don't really notice it, but it's real shitty because 
it has all the like all the fumes coming from LA and and they travel from LA down to where I live at in Bakersfield and it just got shitty air quality. But trust me, I look, I know how it is. Cause you can bring you, uh, you can bring up some groceries upstairs. Like when, like when I first moved there, I brought up groceries cause I lived on the third floor. I brought up groceries and pretty much passed out when I got upstairs. Like that's how like out of breath I was because it really hits you if you ain't from there. So trust me, I understand. I understand. Oh, I noticed it too. Cause I, um, like, when I was in the hospital and rehab, I had to be on mm-hmm. um, oxygen all the time. So it's mm-hmm. like breathing yep, in the too. oxygen yeah. and then like not having it. It's just like, oh, yeah. you, you really feel the difference. Oh, that's, yeah. You don't know, that's crazy because when I had to go through everything as far as like in the hospital, I was, I was still living in Colorado Springs. So I had to do everything out there. So whenever they took me off the ventilator and everything, it was like I would be pouring, sweating because I just felt like I just couldn't breathe. And like they would tell you, no, like your oxygen levels are, are pretty good. You know what I mean? It's just like you just, it's it, like the breathing out there is just, it's shitty. It's shitty. So, yeah. It was, yeah. yeah trying to figure out how to breathe after the, yeah. like, they took out those tubes too. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. having them make me do those breathing exercises with yep. the little ball in the machine mm-hmm. and afterwards I'd be like are we done like I'd be so sweaty <laughs> afterwards hell yeah hell yeah look I was the same way too because because I had a trach in but then they also took out one of my lungs so it was like pretty much I literally had to learn how to breathe all over again and it was it was shitty I had to do all those breathing exercises I couldn't eat for like three weeks but I had a breathing tube in so it was it was just all around shitty so okay Okay, now, I know I asked you a whole bunch of questions and everything. Is there anything that you would like to ask me? Um, what made you start your podcast? What made me start the podcast? Ugh, okay, so I've been doing YouTube for, I would say, like the past like seven years. And once I stopped, because I used to be a weed tuber. So I used to like do like like funny videos and stuff like that, like smoking weed and stuff like that, like reviewing like strands. But my channel got deleted once it started going like viral, like once I hit like 60 some thousand. And then I was like, you know what? I had a backup channel that had like 4,000 subscribers. And I was like, uh, I asked my wife, I was like, hey, look, let's just go ahead and do like a couple's thing on there. And we did that. And but by that time, at the time that I hit the like around like 60 some thousand, they was wanting to know more about my life. So I, I would always tell them that, that I was in a wheelchair, but they, they really kind of didn't believe that I was in a wheelchair because I was in like a studio and I was behind like a desk and stuff. So once I transitioned to do that, I had I just started doing things about my life, like different vlogs or like just showing people how to do stuff. And then slowly but surely, like uh, one day, like a few like a few weeks ago, I was just I was like, you know, I was just kind of like looking for something to do because like. Like, like we was just doing like vlogs and like traveling and stuff like that. And I was like, you know what? I asked somebody on uh on my Instagram. I just put it out there. I was like, hey, would anybody like for me to like pretty much like interview them? And somebody who had uh he recently got injured, he got shot. He was like, yeah. He was like, yeah, let's do it. And I did it, and it was it it, it worked out good. And uh, I, it really the way how people reacted to it, I could tell that they just wanted more of it. And I enjoy doing it. Like, you know, like I really enjoy talking to people, connecting because yeah, like uh, people look at my social media and they probably get a different perception of the, of me than what I really am because I don't really talk to people as much, but on my social media, it might look like I'm very open and I talk to a lot of people when I really don't. I'm really just like, like, I'm really a homebody. Like it's just me and my wife, but me doing this podcast, I was able to really get out there and start talking to people and networking a lot more than what I have been. And like, I tell people all the time, Hey, in this past month, I've talking to more people in this past month than I have been probably the past five years. So yeah, (laughs) that was a long story. (laughs) It was still long. Oh yes. Now it's my turn to interview you. Oh yes. (laughs) <laughs> tables have turned yeah so yeah that was it um i enjoyed the podcast um and i really i don't think i realized it but within like the past year i started watching a lot of podcasts and i just didn't i didn't realize it until i started doing a podcast kind of i guess 
So, and then, yeah, and then it's cool because I could do a remote too. So, yeah, because I just finished watching uh, Ashley and Nikki's interviews mm-hmm. with you today. Okay, appreciate it. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. Yeah, you know, like I'm just, I'm like, I really enjoy, j- really, just for the simple fact that I've able to just meet so many good people in just so little time. So I can only imagine when I've been doing it a year. Like I've only been doing it for a month. You know what I mean? Oh, so, for real? Yeah, I I, I literally just started month. doing I literally just started doing the podcast last month. Like literally last month. Cuz like before like That's I said crazy. I was just doing like vlogs. Yeah, I was just doing vlogs. So if you go look at the channel, it's just me and my wife like just traveling and just me just doing different vlogs, car stuff. Like just like little stuff like that. So like uh like I showed like people how to drive on there, like just different hand controls. You know, just just me living my life in a wheelchair, pretty much. So hey, look, it's some good stuff on there. It's some it's it's some good stuff on there. But there's also a lot of wheelchair YouTubers out there that really has a lot of good stuff. You're a female, so there are a lot of female YouTubers out there that, that are really probably giving the knowledge that you really kind of need to hear. So I mean, I wouldn't say I wouldn't recommend my channel because I really would, but there's a lot of other people out there that they have amazing channels that you can learn a lot of the stuff from too as well. So big ups to all them too. So, yeah. Oh yeah. Like there's, yeah. there's a woman I watch her and her uh, YouTube is called pro tips for Paris. Okay. Uh, and, and there's like wills to walking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I learned a lot from watching, watching his stuff on there. Um, mm-hmm. There's a girl I used to watch. I don't remember what her name is. There's a girl I used to watch from the UK when I first got injured and okay. learned a lot of stuff from there. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm actually about to do a podcast with a lady who's from the UK too. So, okay. Yeah. So, all right. Then, well, look, I appreciate you coming on, sharing your story. Um, it's really amazing to see how far you came in just such little time. So. Thank you for coming on the podcast and really giving me this opportunity to really share your story to the people out there. So I just want to tell you, thank you for coming on and I really appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate you for having me. (laughs) Thank you. All right.